In this video, we are going to understand what's the difference between facial paralysis due to stroke and Bell's palsy. So make sure you watch this video till the end. Hello friends, I am physiotherapist Meghna Dave and welcome to the Health Q channel, the place to be where our mission is to boost up your health motivation. And we come up with the videos every single Monday. So make sure you subscribe to this channel and press that bell icon so that you can get notified every single time we upload a new video. Every facial paralysis is not related to Bell's palsy. There are different conditions as well that could lead to facial paralysis. And the two most commonest reasons of getting facial paralysis is Bell's palsy and stroke. So what's the difference between Bell's palsy and stroke? Let's have a look. So the first and the most important difference between Bell's palsy and facial paralysis due to stroke is Bell's palsy happens due to damage or inflammation and there is involvement of only one single nerve and that is facial nerve. On the contrary, when it comes to the facial paralysis due to stroke, the damage is within the brain. The damage happens either due to clot or else hemorrhage or else sometimes following a road traffic accident where there is injury to your brain. The second important differentiation factor between Bell's palsy and facial paralysis due to stroke is Bell's palsy is a temporary condition. It's following an inflammation or else an viral attack that leads to some symptoms which will last for say around three months to six months. Sometimes also there are patients who have longer running Bell's palsy. In that situation, the damage to the nerve is really high but it is very rare. So that's the differentiating factor when it comes to Bell's palsy. On the contrary, if you see stroke related facial paralysis, it's kind of permanent since the damage has happened to the brain and unfortunately the regenerating capacity of the brain is very less. So although the patients are able to recover, but these patients will always see a difference between the affected side and the non-affected side since there is involvement of the brain. Third differentiating factor is there is the drooping of the face on one side and the involvement is kind of typically of entire one half of the face. On the contrary, when it comes to stroke related facial paralysis, the facial paralysis happens on the, one, the lower fourth area of the face. So the upper fourth above the nose, the area would be normal, but the lower area or the lower region of the face would be affected. The another differentiating factor is the symptoms following Bell's palsy is nowhere else but just in face. On the contrary, when it comes to stroke related facial paralysis, everybody knows stroke leads to paralysis of one side of the body. Now, there are chances of separation or as differentiation based on what area the stroke has hampered or has damaged the brain Based on that area, the stroke symptoms would be seen. Next is age. People between 20 to 50 years of age group are prone to develop Bell's palsy. Whereas when it comes to stroke, mostly stroke happens on the older age group of people, somewhere between age group of 50 to 60. And again, exceptional exist since patients who have brain injury, brain traumatic injury, they might be at younger age and also can experience stroke. But this is very rare. It's very easily differentiable. The people who will have acute episode of facial paralysis suddenly following a viral infection who are in this particular age group of 20 to 50 would have Bell's palsy. Whereas people who have systemic diseases like hypertension, cholesterol will have the stroke episode. That too in an older age group. Next differentiating factor is there are very few associated symptoms along with Bell's palsy. Mostly a patient who is suffering from Bell's palsy will complain of pain in and around the ear or else some tingling or else numbness or slight facial pain on the affected side. But when it comes to stroke related facial paralysis, patients will also complain of some different symptoms like vertigo. Ataxia. So ataxia is nothing but imbalance. They are not able to feel the balance or else the constant normal flow of movement. They feel everything is shivering or moving. Next symptom that is associated with stroke is weakness of the body, numbness of the body. They also feel some kind of tremors coming on the affected side, particularly hand. They have difficulty in speech and swallowing. They also complain sometimes of double vision. 
since there is involvement of eye but not due to paralysis of face but due to involvement of the brain region which is again a very differentiating thing but this depends on what area of brain has been damaged not every stroke patient will complain of double visions so it's a very different kind of condition and very differently needs to be managed i hope this video will solve your doubts i see many people who have this particular myth that they fearing of stroke following in bell's palsy episode but definitely trust me guys if you have bell's palsy doesn't mean that you will develop stroke in future that doesn't happen because two of these conditions are absolutely different i hope you find this video helpful and informative if yes make sure you hit that like button and do subscribe to this channel and share this video with your friends and family whom you feel this video would be helpful on that note i will see you in another video thank you